came in, colonized Mars by sciencing the Greek algebra. <laughs> Forensics is going to colonize crime by sowing the seeds of science into the criminal justice system. That demon took two hours and 500 souls to return safely home. I have spent the last 15 years of my life dedicated to spreading awareness of forensic science and its potential use as a powerful investigative tool. Forensic science fascinates. Everybody loves a gruesome murder. As can be seen in the last decade with the rise of viewership of series like CSI, CID, Bones, and Criminal Minds, just to name a few. But the science itself is not a new one. It's been around for ages. Let's spend a couple of minutes looking at the ingredients of change that you and I, as citizens of this country, deserve for our protection and safety. The eternal justice triangle. Three roads all leading to justice. It is the collective work of the police force, the forensic investigators, and the, ju the judiciary to ensure that we get a just, fair system of criminal justice. Efficient for all without prejudice. Fingerprints were first used in 1892 in Argentina to solve a crime. In those days, it involved the manual visual examination of fingerprint patterns of forensic or fingerprint bridge characteristics on the tips of the fingers, trying to pinpoint the pattern to one particular individual. Today, we have graduated to automated fingerprint identification systems. Systems that allow us to capture forensic fingerprints from a crime scene, digitalize them, and then compare them to a database of offenders. Fast forward 120 years to 2016. We're now looking at touch DNA. A simple handshake is not just a handshake or a greeting anymore. The touch DNA is sensitive enough to pick up skin cells and sweat particles to provide an identity to the greeter. <clears throat> Such is our evidence. But irrespective, it all rests on one single premise. And that is, every contact leaves a trace. Wherever you go, whatever you touch, consciously or unconsciously, you leave trace evidence behind. Let's look at some examples. Hair, for instance clutched tightly in the fist of a victim of an assault, pulled from the head of the attacker. The victim may no longer have a voice to tell their story, but the hair will bear silent witness. The hair, when analyzed and the root tip looked at, will allow for an identification of the attacker. Contact. Establishing contact. Let's look at soil. We find soil evidence on the soles of our shoes, on the underside of a car, on the hems of our trousers, telling a story of the journey we've traveled. But can you pick that traveler and put him at the crime scene and show that he was at the crime scene? Undeniably irrefutable forensic evidence. Yes, you can. You can look at the soil comparison. You can look at the footwear patterns. You can look at the individual wear and tear that each of us produces on the soles of our shoes. You can look at the brand. And today, you can even do gait analysis to pinpoint to one individual. An observant forensic scientist may look at a broken window and examine the fracture pattern and turn around and explain how this particular window broke. He may even go on to be lucky and establish who the perpetrator of the broken window was. The guilty person, having allowed unsuspectingly one tiny chip of glass to land on his shirt sleeve, pinning him at the crime scene. So every contact leaves a trace. It is these micro traces that we use as the links to establish a chain of events of what happened leading up to the crime scene. This is known as a crime scene reconstruction. Question every single broken button. Question all those extra paint flakes that are not supposed to be there that are in unexpected places. How do they fit into the larger jigsaw puzzle? In the TV series, 
all these magical evidences get solved with the snap of a finger. <laughs> but it's these snaps of fingers that create, sadly, an unrealistic expectation of an exacting science. In the real world, it takes a little more time to, to solve a particular piece of evidence, analyze it completely, scientifically, methodologically, certainly much more than 45 minutes, the average duration of one TV serial, if I include the commercial breaks. My job is that of a forensic consultant. But more often than not today, I find myself playing the role of a forensic translator. The forensic science is confusing, it's complex. The contextualizing can sometimes overwhelm a courtroom. And it certainly doesn't get packaged in that neat package we see in the TV serials. Let's look at some of the cases that we've seen in the last decade. A young 15-year-old girl found murdered brutally, cold-bloodedly, in the middle of the night in her locked bedroom. <coughs> what are some of the questions that forensics can answer? Let's see if the blood stains can tell a story. They can tell us whose blood is it? Does the pattern point to a particular source? Can we look at the angle of impact and the size of the droplets to establish where that particular weapon was at the time of attack? What was the direction of the attacker? And of course, very obviously, footprints, bloodied footprints left at the crime scene. Fingerprints trailing along the walls. Can we follow those clues to find the pathway of the killer? Blood evidence analysis can do all of this. It can answer all of this. Sometimes with just one drop of blood. Speaking of drops, the most popular question we see is, what's your poison? <laughs> In forensics, that takes on a whole new connotation. The poison could be as diverse as talcum powder, <coughs> alcohol, insecticide, cocaine, rat poison, snake bite. You can see the range of possibilities and the difficulty sometimes in trying to establish a cause of death. But one thing is constant. And what is that? That is that whatever we ingest into our systems as human beings must necessarily go through a process of digestion and elimination. So let's look at one of these poisons in a little more detail. One that we're very familiar with. Alcohol. I draw your attention to the graph on the screen. If you look at that graph, it depicts what the blood alcohol levels can be expected to be seen with the time passage. And we can see very clearly that after the last drink, within about 90 minutes, alcohol levels in the blood are starting to reduce, drop. They no longer depict the real value at the time of incidence. So let's look at a situation of an 18-year-old, Bandra boy, affluent, goes out partying with his friends, four nice young college friends, and he has one too many glasses of the poison, but still insists on dropping everybody home. How does this story end? The story ends with the death of seven pavement dwellers. In the real world, what are the challenges you face? When you're at that crime scene, do you run to save seven pavement dwellers fighting for their lives? Or do you hurriedly leave the crime scene with the drunk driver, ensuring that you make it into a hospital within 90 minutes so that you can get an accurate alcohol level? What do we do? Decisions that you have to sleep with at night for the rest of your life. But my pet peeve, and I leave you with this thought last, forensics has a role to play, both to convict the guilty as well as to protect the innocent. We live in a country where false accusations of rape are on the rise. Can forensic science protect these innocent? A man who is charged with murder and is serving a life sentence for something he did not do, is he living in an environment where the justice triangle does not prevail? 
Or is he living in an environment where ignorance, inertia, apathy, if you will, or unrealistic expectations of an exacting science prevail? I have spent the last few years of my life poring over technical documents, reports, with an innocent person leaning over my shoulder, praying for a miracle. Forensic science is factual evidence. It does not forget. It does not disappear. It does not lie. It does not perjure itself. It does not get confused in the excitement of the moment. It is human error. Human error to find it, analyze it, and interpret it that will diminish its value. And so, after partially demystifying forensic science behind TV serials, I leave you with one thought. Forensics is a complex science, one that requires tremendous training, understanding, <laughs> decision making, but above all, honesty and integrity to ensure that we have impartial, efficient justice delivery systems in the country. Thank you.